Good morning, and uh, welcome. We are back for another uh, show. Today we're going to do uh, 45 minutes, just so you know. So um, we're not going to go the full hour just because we have to catch a plane really fast, so I don't want to be late. And why do we have to catch a plane? Because we have to go somewhere. And why do we have to go somewhere? Because there's a wedding involved. Yay! Our son. Our son <laughs> is getting married. Jeez, wow. <laughs> don't Okay, um, okay, listen, anything that Let's we say go. is not meant to diagnose you or cure you. Uh, this is meant to um, give you information to do your own research. And um, so that's really what we're going to do today. We have a ton of calls, and you are going to accumulate a lot of questions on social media so we can rapidly go through as many possible questions in the next 45 minutes. How about that? Sound good? Does that sound good? Oh, I get to talk now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can say And that. hello, by the well, way. <laughs> Okay. okay, take two. Yeah. Okay. I've Good got morning. Smacked you. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to Ro <laughs> Rowena. You had a question about the peroneal nerve, right? You had some damage to that, and you had a question about that? Yes. Okay. Yes. My daughter has uh, peroneal nerve damage um, since 2018, January, and she had foot drop, and then she went to physical therapy. Uh, that summer, uh, August and then September, for the foot drop, but she still is so upset. She still has residual partial numbness from the um, knee down on the right side of the, it's the right leg, down to her toes, and it's really bothering her. That she doesn't know what she should do real nutritionally real to quick, get rid of it. Real quick question. Was there any trauma? What triggered yeah. it? Anything? What triggered it? I don't know if they know for sure. She had she had suffered that same time, and she went to the hospital with anorexia. She uh, in January when and then they put her on this medicine called Remeron, I guess for depression or something. But she was she said as soon as she started taking it, she she started having the problem with the leg, the the, the numbness and all that sort of thing. And she read up where that could be a side effect. But at any rate, we're just wondering how to get rid of it. She did get the physical therapy for the foot drop part of it and all that, and they did the nerve conduction study on the nerve, and they said, yes, yeah, some of it wasn't working or whatever. Well, let, me I think let, me they let me explain what to do, okay? Um, obviously, this is another situation. I released, released a video recently on the relationship between nutritional deficiencies and um, their side effects from drugs. Um, basically, what, let me just reverse that. The side effects from drugs giving you nutritional deficiencies, <laughs> and so, when you take, especially a psych drug, it depletes you of various things. Um, what I would do immediately before you do anything, get her on healthy keto, get her on intermittent fasting, and start taking large dosages of the B vitamins. Um, sometimes it's hard to find a natural version, but the one that I would recommend is through my mitochondrial support. That's like a high-end product for natural B vitamins, because um, it's really only two companies that sell natural B vitamins. And I use one of the companies. Um, so anyway, the, the point is that you want to start taking, she wants to start taking B vitamins immediately. The other thing you can do, and I don't know if I have a video on this or not, I'll probably have to do one, but you want her to do acupressure on the opposite nerve. Now the peroneal nerve is actually extension from the, actually the sciatic nerve, which comes out the, the back by your butt bone, comes out and then it wraps around the front on the uh, front part of the, it's called the fibula, which is the outer part of the lower leg. So what she needs to do is take um, her fingers or someone else do this and massage down the left, the good leg, and trace that nerve down. That's going to be very, very painful. Don't ask me why, but just do it gently until um, after about two weeks. Just do that, and that'll actually kind of wake up the right side. Um, if you don't understand where to go, just look up on Google. Um, where exactly the um, peroneal nerve is, and then match it on the left side and just kind of stimulate that nerve. Okay? But I should do a video on that. But thanks for your call. All right, Karen, where are people um, from today? Well, so far all over the U.S., Italy, South Africa, Malaysia, Norway, Australia, the United States, I already said that. Yeah. Twice people are here from the United States. Algeria, Canada, Finland, and I'm not even halfway down the wow. YouTube. Wow, this is awesome. So we, 
we're communicating to the world right now. Yes. Um, do we have any good questions coming up? Well, uh, there's a question here. Uh, someone from YouTube is saying, super skinny, but I have a big belly. Yeah. It's called, it could be called skinny fat. Um, what happens is that you're getting fat usually in the um, viscera around the organs, mm -hmm. and that's coming because there could be a fatty liver, potentially. In which case, you want to do a stricter version of keto, um, but that will probably be the a last thing that it'll go because you have to kind of clean out the fat from the liver mm -hmm. by keeping the carbs low, doing intermittent fasting to the point where actually it's flat. Now, the other thing is that if you are consuming food and your stomach is bloated, definitely more at the end of the day, that's really a digestive issue as well, and it could be more of a problem with certain vegetables that you're eating that you're not used to. So I have a video on that. They should search out. It's on bloating. I have actually many. So, uh, but they're going to have to do more of a hardcore um, keto and IF until it's completely flat. But I would probably just do one a meal a day, and it should flatten it pretty fast. Yeah. And on that note, let's go to Christy from Dallas, Texas. You had a question. You've been having some breathing problems taking the opposite of vinegar pills. Is that true? Yes. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Bird. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, when I first started doing intermittent uh, fasting with keto, the ketogenic diet back in February, I had started to acidify my stomach, and I didn't really have any issue taking the betaine hydrochloric acid or the apple cider vinegar tablets. Then I kind of just, in, in the mixture, I guess, of all my vitamins and supplements, I kind of tapered off doing it. And I picked it back up recently just to make sure that my stomach was staying acidic. And I noticed that whenever I do take them, especially if I take them together, I have a hard time. I get a little bit of chest pain, but then um, even trying to talk, it's, um, I, can, I can talk, but I'm, I feel a little... I feel a little bit of pressure on my on my chest, and so I guess I'm saying I get winded. I feel like it's okay. making me a little out of breath, and right. I didn't know if, if this is what it's from, but I, I think it is. Okay. Well, let me just tell you what I would recommend. Yeah, uh, first of all, try to take it in the middle of the meal and see if that handles it. And if it does, great. If not, it could be that you... Right now, you're, the pH is fine, um, because I do know that if you actually take kombucha tea or apple cider vinegar when you don't need it, when, when you have enough acid, it will affect the breathing because it will start pushing you more, more to an acidic side. Uh, I'm not saying a full-blown acidosis, but just more acidic than it should, and that will definitely create a kind of a, a, a breathing change. So that's what I would do. Um, if you are still irritated when you take it in the middle of the meal, then just stop taking it for like six weeks. And then you can try it again to see how you feel. But I think you may have enough acid that you might not need it at this point. All right? Thanks for your call. All right, Karen, I'm ready for another question. Okay, so we have Anna on Facebook. She just got her gallbladder removed. Okay. She wants to know how soon can she start keto. Right. Well, a good thing they have spare ones uh, that you can order. They come in different uh, plastic Sizes. models and metals and things like that. So you can get them back in there. They have... Um, you can order them online, so that'll solve that problem. Completely. I'll sell your carriers for ten bucks. Joking. Yeah, so um, you want to start keto uh, immediately because it's kind of a it's a healing thing. It's not going to be worsening the the surgery at all. It's going to help you recover from the surgery. What I would do though, if I were you, is I would probably instead of going into a tremendous amount of fats because now. We are dealing with uh, one tube from your, your liver to the small intestine. We don't have that sac anymore. So you're going to have to kind of go a little lighter with the fats right now so you can gradually work up to it. You may uh, benefit from some gallbladder help with um, something called um, bile salts, purified bile salts. It's, it's in the gallbladder formula. You may benefit like one after a meal. Um, the other thing that I would do, and this is very powerful, is to do massage on the opposite side where the gallbladder is. So the gallbladder is on the right, so you massage on the left and just massage that. It seems to help um, trauma from injury, including surgery. I'm not going to get into why, but just try it, and I think you may experience a fast recovery from that. All right, good. On that note, I think we need to go to Kevin from 
upstate New York. Are you there, Kevin? Yes, I am. So um, you you uh, go ahead. You please? yes. Uh, go ahead. I'm just rebuild my stomach acid. Yeah. I'm um, 65 years old and the digestion has been awful. I did suffer from a a um, light hiatal hernia, which I do believe I have under control and everything's back into place. I've been doing a. Uh, Apple cider vinegar and uh, uh, betaine. Is that is that how I say it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, before each meal, as well as uh, uh, later in the day, I'll do celery juice. And my food portions have been very small, just a couple of scrambled eggs, half a cup of homemade potatoes. And then in the evening, I'll have uh, some steamed broccoli or something like that. Uh, if I have anything other than that, I suffer burning uh, up in the throat and uh, I'm getting tired of it. Okay. So, um, I've, been, I've been doing this for about three weeks, by the way. Go ahead. I've been doing, I've been doing this for three weeks, okay. Okay, so a couple things. Um, if you don't, if you actually have acid reflux, and uh, I tell people try apple cider vinegar, betaine hydrochloride, 95% uh, of the time that will help the person, but there is a certain time where it won't help the person, either because they have... Um, kind of some ga gastritis problem where the, uh, the stomach is, um, um, it has more inflammation than it should. And so when you add the apple cider vinegar, it can actually irritate the, the stomach lining because it's been eroding over a period of time. In which case, um, zinc, colonate, is the absolute hands down best thing to take. You take zinc, it actually, it's great for ulcers, it's great for gastritis, as well as some licorice. Not the type of candy you'd buy, but as li licorice as a supplement. Those two are great for gastritis. I would do that, take a little less outside of vinegar because it could be more of an irritation, yet you have to heal the stomach for a while. The problem I have is with your potatoes. So maybe you can try to do more cauliflower as your starch, but um, you do need to um, probably beef up, no pun intended, the vegetables, salads, just to get the chlorophyll to start healing them as well. People that um, maybe had a history of eating refined foods, they usually end up with a lot of digestive problems, especially if they don't have enough raw food like um, vegetables that have the enzymes, so it depletes their own pancreas, and they end up straining the system. So I think people don't consume enough raw foods. I'm not, I'm not talking about raw chicken. I'm talking about vegetables. So try that, Kevin, and let us know how that works. All right, Karen? I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Karen, what do you got? Okay, so um, Gal here is saying, is asking, why does her husband get foot and leg cramps? He's on keto IF, but apparently he gets foot and leg cramps when he cheats and eats fast food. What? Really? That's a, that's really hard to believe. Why would he get? <laughs> why would he get those cramps? You need to ask a question that I could really answer. I mean, that's, that's really a tough one. I don't know if I could figure that one out. Give it a shot. All right. Um, maybe go back to keto, and I have to see if that helps you. Um, because whatever worked in the past may work again. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's sort of the question, like, why do I feel like crap when I'm eating the standard American diet? It's just the wrong question. That's I right. think, and not, right, not that your question was a bad question. It brings up a really good point. It, it's, it's, we don't need to put any attention on why does someone feel bad when they eat poorly or they eat poison or they eat fake food or poor quality food or whatever. We just know that that happens. Well, who, because you're filling your body with toxins and refined carbohydrates and sugars and that it makes a body sick. So you're gonna feel, you're gonna feel bad. I mean, you just had this video on. Um, hopefully, everybody watched it, or if not, after this, you go watch it that you posted yesterday, of this before and after. You watch that. Okay, good. Of course, I watched it. Awesome. And it, it's this woman who lost over two years, like 140 pounds or 60 pounds or something. Her husband was not on that video, but he also over the same time period lost 160 pounds. I mean, these people lost several people's worth of weight, right? And she made a comment. She said, you know, I just feel so great. And, and she was heavy her whole life, as long as she can remember, from the time she was a tween. Um, 
And she said, I didn't realize how awful I felt all the time. I just was so used to how I felt that I thought it was really normal to feel this way. And then when she started to lose the weight, and she said, you know, within two months, she had a reduction of all the swelling in her feet and her hands within two months. And she was still, you know, 150 pounds overweight or whatever, but she didn't realize how awful she felt until she started keto and intermittent fasting. Yeah, uh, the name of that video, uh, which if you guys need want to go watch it, it is, um, the name of the video is, the name of the video, it's well, coming it to me right yesterday. now. Yeah. It was released yesterday. Yeah. It was just released yesterday. From 315 pounds, and then 143 kilograms to 138 pounds, okay? So that video has 50,000 views already. So yeah. um, that's a really good one. Especially it's an amazing if, story. If, especially if you're like in doubt about doing keto and you're wondering if it's going to work. Well, guess what? Yes. It's going to work. This lady very well. did everything. She did her first program was Weight Watchers, she said, when she was 12 or 13 years old with we don't her mom. Give, give it away. Well, oh, hey, some people may do. Oh, the video you mean? Yeah. Well, okay. It's true. But my point was really about, you know, if you feel like crap when you're eating the standard American diet, it's because the standard American diet is the problem. Absolutely. That was too much time on that question, but I hope the lady answering, asking the question is inspired in some way. <laughs> hey, Elizabeth, you're from Alabama. You had a question about uh, can carbs be absorbed through the skin. Is that true? Is that the right question? Yes. 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 I Are, use um, a, an organic cornstarch baby powder pretty liberally just to prevent chafing and I just was wondering if that contributes to my carb intake for the day. Okay. Well, um, no. Um, however, the cornstarch is GMO, so there might be... Uh, she said organic cornstarch. Oh, okay. Then, no, it's not going to uh, go, go through the skin at all. There, in the skin, you have a fat layer, so it's protected. You're not going to absorb things like that. I mean, there are certain things that could be absorbed, like chemicals, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. It's not going to go right in the bloodstream and spike your blood sugar at all. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Now, if you're doing the foot scrubs. <laughs> right, so that was my thing. She's either snuggling with candy bar at night or she's using a, a sugar scrub in the shower, which is a legit point. Yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect your blood sugars. Now, if you rub a candy bar on your arm, no, that's not going to affect you. When you rub a candy bar, it's just sort of like you're rubbing it on your face, and then you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Good question, though. Good question, because other things do absorb through the skin. That's right. Hey, Terry, you're from Minnesota. Your question on keto. Yes. Go ahead. What was your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, I've been doing your keto for about eight months, and I got... Uh, a lot of your supplements and, and stuff like this and uh, I was suffering from diabetic but I, I'm at 5.5 now and been off the meds for a long time and so right but my blood sugar I check in the morning now I know there's a dawn effect and stuff but I got past that so in the morning my blood sugar is running between the highs in the 70s and the low 80s but now in the last three weeks or so it's slowly creeping up, and I'm hanging around roughly just a hair above 100. Um, I've been doing your um, uh, kale shake that you got on your video with parsley. I do add one lemon. The whole works to it. I blend that up. Um, I can only down roughly 16 ounces of that liquid with meat and, and stuff like this. Um, but my, I can't seem to be getting my blood sugar numbers down and I'm doing the choline tablet or capsules mm -hmm. and the isotopes, I think it's called the also. What? And what? Um, I, the, the product um, that you mentioned that would help with your liver you know, oh, inositol? Fatty liver. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And I think, I think my damage, I did to myself. I think. 
is I did too much organic oil. Mm. Not fat, but oil. You know, like um, uh, coconut oil, olive oil, mm. avocado oil, and stuff like that because my gallbladder went nuts on me. It felt like I had a fist inside my ribs beating the heck out of me here. Wow. And I stopped doing the oil and stuff and my uh, that pounding on my chest, on my ribs, actually my ribs are so sore I couldn't even touch them with my fingers. My okay. ribs hurt so bad. Let me but give you a couple Terry, let me give you Terry, let me give you a couple tips on that. Uh, uh, that could be um, I could do a whole uh, video on this. Actually, I have. I'm going to do another one though because you actually gave me another idea. But I, anytime your blood sugars go high, like that, for people don't know, it's called the dawn phenomena, which um, it's a transitional thing and uh, it will go up a little bit. So here you are. You're not eating carbs. You're not eating sugar. Yet it's going high. That's weird. So where is that sugar coming from? Well, it's coming from the body. It, from the usually the liver is making the sugar, or the kidney. It's called gluconeogenesis. So it's the generation of new glucose. Um, just so you know, um, there's only certain parts of the body that need glucose. Parts of the brain, the red blood cell, the eye, and there might be a couple more places, but it's not that significant. But the body then could make it from other sources. It could make it from ketones, yes, if it needs it. It could make it from um, recycling some of the um, lactate from the carbohydrates, or not the carbohydrates, but just from lactate. It's part of the something that's in your um, mitochondria. Also, it can, um, it can make it from the organs. So I don't know exactly what's your situation, but I think the fact that you had so much uh, irritation to the gallbladder area, there's something still going on with either the liver or the gallbladder. So um, I would kind of try to heal that, uh, spend more time on maybe um, adding more of the vegetables and doing the flushes that I talk about and maybe even supporting with some gallbladder formula. And then if there's anything new that you're eating, um, take that out of the diet and see if that improves it. And then add exercise to burn it off. I will do a separate video on this so you have more data, but um, I would not worry about it. It's a minor effect, um, but I think it's something related to your liver. Thanks, Terry. Okay, I have a great one here. Good. And it makes me want to say, Tanya, watch the video Dr. Berg was talking about that was released just yesterday with the huge weight loss. Say it again because someone was asking what the video was. Uh, it's basically from 130, it just it starts as from 315 pounds to 138 pounds. Yeah. It's a lady, a blonde lady, and you see her before and her after. Go on. Silver you, gray. She is silver. If you, if you check the videos out by day, you'll see yesterday it was released. That said, Tanya says, hello, I am type 1 diabetic trying to do keto. And she's honest. She says, I say I'm trying because when I have hypos, I drink juice or eat sweets to bring my blood sugar up. Yeah. For three to four months, I haven't lost any weight. Yeah. Why? Yeah, I think... Um, the basic education. I, I think a lot of people in the beginning, because she's operating off of the data that's on the web, and if you start searching hypoglycemia on the first page, one, two, three, four, five, six pages of Google, you're going to get the same old, same old, which is just, I believe, false information. When you have hypoglycemia, the reason why you have that is because, you know, you have either too much insulin or you're eating carbs. In your case, you end up with hypoglycemia, which automatically, if you're type 1, tells me that you're taking too much medication. Um, type 1s don't have insulin, so they have to, they have to take it. Well, insulin's going to push down the blood, blood uh, sugar. Well, get with your doctor yeah. and reevaluate that because I think you're taking too much. So you have to back off, not, not allow your blood sugar to go low, where you have to take more insulin and then or more, sugar. more sugar, more insulin, the back and forth. We wanna, the goal is to take the least possible. In the presence of that insulin you're taking as a medication, that's going to be what's stopping you from losing weight. Now, she doesn't say she's taking medication. Well, she ha if she's type 1, she's taking insulin. Oh, I see. She has and that's to take his it. opinion. You definitely need to go to your doctor and let your doctor know that you're having these moments where 
you're dropping too low yeah. and then you're having to eat sugar. That shouldn't be the situation. So definitely talk to your medical doctor about that yeah. um, situation. And, and then watch, just watch the video on hypoglycemia that I did. And read the book. Yeah, and if I, I think I even did a uh, video on um, type one and hypoglycemia. Okay, and read so. the book and understand what is happening. And even the booklet, the small booklet. Do you have that here? No. No. Okay. So there's a book and a smaller booklet on the website, drberg.com. And you read those and you'll really understand what is happening and why is it that you're having these fluctuations of, of blood sugar, insulin, and how you can control that. And you're on a medicine, you have to work with your medical doctor on that. But, but it, it don't even look at weight loss if you're still you know, drinking the juice and the sugar and you're making that, you have to handle that struggle first and that m m huge fluctuation before you're gonna see any weight loss. That's my opinion. And you're sticking to it? And I'm sticking to it. Hey Elizabeth, you're from Florida, Fort Lauderdale. You had a question, go ahead. Hi, uh, Dr. I'm really glad to be. I have lost over 100 pounds and I'm very satisfied with everything. I want to thank you, but I do the problem with you, and it's gotten so bad that I can't drive. What, what and I was wondering if there was anything, any way to tweak the program to help my, neuro my neuropathy. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing that you could greatly um, improve that situation with. You need. There's a product, and you can get it online. I don't sell it. It's called benfotamine, okay? Benfotamine. It's, a, it's actually a fat-soluble vitamin. It's a B1. Get it. Take it four times a day and watch what happens because when you're on keto on F, you might need more of that B, B vitamin to help build up the myelin sheath. So I think that's what you're missing is the benfotamine. It can also help um, the retina in your eye too. So Check that out. Good question. Okay. Alex, you're from Alabama. You had a question about how can you slow down a certain disease, right? Yes, I want to thank you, Dr. Burke, first of all, for helping me eliminate my asthma. I've had that for 30 years. Wow. And I took your adrenal formula. I don't have a problem with it anymore. Uh, you've helped me with my acid reflux also. Thank you for that. Um, I, my mother had Huntington's disease, and uh, she passed away from it. And I got the blood test about four months ago, and I am positive I do have it. And I just wondered if you have any advice on how I might be able to slow down the progress of the disease. Well, I think, um, yeah, this is how I answer all the questions about diseases, because all the time people want to know, how do you slow down, prevent, mitigate, cure diseases? This is what I would do. Uh, instead of focusing on the disease, I would focus on your health and start building up your health and um, watch what happens. Um, and how do you do that? The exact version of, by the book, literally by the book, it's called The Healthy Keto Plan. So um, you want to do healthy ketosis and IF exactly correctly. The, the lady that lost all that weight, um, she basically read the book and she did, not, she did it exactly like I recommend it. And the reason why it works is because it's based on close to 40,000 people. Just so you guys know, if you can um, save yourself a lot of experimentation um, by using other people's experience. So that's what you're getting. You're like, okay, if it worked on that many people, we sorted out all the, the things that don't work, and then now we can show you what does work. Just do it, it will work. That's what I would recommend, Alex. But thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Yeah, so uh, uh, one other thing that that gal, and I feel terrible that I don't recall her name, but, mm. but anyway, the video that you released yesterday, <clears throat> another thing she made a huge point of is how easy it was. And she said, it was so easy for me, and she said, I don't, you know, she followed it by the book. Literally, she said she read the book. She had watched videos, she read the book, and it was what she learned in the book that sealed the deal for her. And, and it was just so easy because she did it exactly by the book. 
So people are going to struggle, will have a difficult time when they're trying to blend different solutions and different approaches and stuff, and they get a loss, and then they think keto doesn't work for them when, you know. Yeah, I think that, the um, the book. I think, um, you know, the I spent. Book, the book, the Healthy Keto Plan, hold it up again. Yeah, I, s I spent uh, seven years, seven years um, Dr. Berg's writing this book, and then another thousand hours of updating it. Um, the thing is that um, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's good as a reference book, but if you get through this book, you will know how to get your body healthy to the extreme. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't get to ask a question yet. I, oh, was, just, I was just throwing two cents go ahead, Karen. in there. Okay, so these are some quick questions, so I get several. What's the best food source of vitamin C? Hands down, it would be sauerkraut. Okay, sauerkraut has like seven hundred milligrams. And then we get into the bell pepper, um, and then um, vegetables have vitamin C as well. Okay, good. Um, we wouldn't recommend kiwi, but because it's a fruit, but that has it as well. Okay. So can keto help, and well, again, this is a, a disease, so I probably shouldn't even ask that, because no, we know it's going to You shouldn't ask it's gonna help. questions. Yeah, we'd like to stay away from disease. I know. Um, okay, so this guy is on uh, keto and IF, and he's starting to get fatigue. Yeah, uh, it's called keto fatigue. It's a transitional step, and it's really, really simple. Um, you need to take B vitamins, okay, from nutritional yeast. That is going to handle your fatigue. Now, there are a couple other reasons why you could have fatigue. It could be you need more sea salt, mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to also, you know, have the icing on the cake and just make things a little bit better for you. You could even take a little MCT oil, just a little bit, um, and that will instantly make you feel better because it'll provide ketones to your brain and it'll feel like you're in full ketosis because when you transition at first, you're only in partial ketosis, more and more and more and more and more. Um, after, I would say, about I don't know, maybe two, two days of doing this, maybe two or three days on keto, um, you pretty much tapped out, or no, two or three days on fasting. What's going to happen is you completely tapped out your glycogen, your sugar reserve, and your liver. Okay? You have, there's no more glycogen in your liver. It's in the muscle, which means your body is going to start making it. And the body is very used to making sugar. It, it, it's good at making it. So it can make it from ketones, it can make it from fat, it can make it from um, other things. If you're concerned about losing muscle mass, that's only going to happen down the road over a period of um, a long time and just a very, very tiny bit. Your body does not go after muscle uh, very much because it's, it's a protective thing. And when you do keto and ketones are elevated, it automatically protects uh, your muscles. So it is... Um, it spares your muscles. Just, just want to let you know that. All right, Martin, you're from uh, Minnesota. Go ahead. You had a question. Yeah, greetings, Dr. Berg and Karen. Hello. Greetings. Hello. So I'm a 46-year-old male. I'm very active, and I exercise regularly. I'm following the healthy keto diet. I do intermittent fasting, and I'm not overweight or diabetic. And I've used a continuous glucose monitor, and I, I show no signs of insulin uh, resistance. So good overall, job. I feel great. I'm very healthy. Life is good. good. <laughs> but um, my IGF-1 score has always run on the lower end of the range, and recently it just dipped um, below the, the lowest uh, uh, number. And so my endocrinologist wants to put me on HGH mm -hmm. or peptides. Mm. And so I have two questions. You know, what is your opinion of, of those items, and are they potentially harmful to the liver? And second question is, do we want a low IGF-1 score or a high IGF-1 score, and how does it relate to insulin, autophagy, et cetera? Well, that's a nice quick question. Um, Actually, it's good for a video. Quick, quick question I have. Do you feel any uh, effects of like any negative effects right now? Do you feel like you have low testosterone? Do you feel like you don't have endurance? Do you feel any of those symptoms? 
No. Okay. So here's my answer. Um, you probably are going to are okay, <laughs> and might not worry about it. I I personally would not recommend taking human growth hormone simply because there's way too many side effects. As far as peptides, I like peptides. I think that's the wave of the future. Uh, they're pretty natural. Uh, very. I mean, I don't even know of any side effects they have. It's kind of uh, the latest um, anti-aging, and they can actually help um, raise human growth hormone indirectly without raising cortisol or other hormones that would make you hungry. So the peptide therapy, I will be doing videos on that. I really like it a lot. I mean, it's more for anti-aging. There's a couple other things that you could do to um, you know, focus on your liver because when you're dealing with IGF, that is a hormone produced by the liver. And it's kind of a reflection of what's going on with the growth hormone indirectly. Um, so anything you do to support liver, maybe you, you take milk thistle or choline or you do things to strengthen the liver, I have tons of videos, may just help your IGF. I mean, you don't want it too high, you don't want it too low, you want it normal. But if you're not experiencing any problems, I think you probably are going to be okay. That's my long-winded answer. Thanks, Barton. All right, Karen. <laughs> we, we have a good question. Uh, we have a lot of questions. A lot of them really are medical yeah. questions. Should I give a general answer on medical questions? Um, well, for I, those I new tell people? you, for anybody who's asking uh, a specific medical question, and this is, you know, maybe we can do a little educating on how to ask the questions so that you know, we, we don't ignore the question. If you say, you know, I have um, blah disease, which is anything like, um, you know, arthritis, uh, I'm on, you know, I have kidney disease, I have heart condition, I have, you know, any kind of disease. If you say, I have this disease, will keto help the disease? Or what can I do to help this disease? It's a kind of a question that, that we can't really answer directly because that's not our field. Disease is for medical doctors. So go ahead and, and give a good answer to people who are curious about how to help the disease that they currently have. I, think, I think if you're new to the channel, you may not know this, uh, but um, uh, there's two approaches. You can treat the the disease itself, or you can create more health. Uh, we found that creating more health is a better strategy because you actually don't treat the symptom anymore. The two things that w that I would recommend is to first get in the basics: healthy keto and intermittent fasting. I have tons of videos on this because when we find when you get that in there, oh my gosh, so many things clear up. Versus addressing a disease, and I do understand a lot of people have different symptoms and mm -hmm. they want to know. But when you actually start doing that without getting the basic foundation in, guess what? It's just a hit or miss. So the way you're going to get the best results is first get the basics in and then um, see what happens. Your symptoms probably will go away. Yeah, and if you have a, a situation with your medical doctor that you're addressing, then that's a, separate, that's a separate thing. You're doing that thing. It doesn't change at all the fact that you're going to read the book, you're going to watch the videos, and you're going to get healthy keto and intermittent fasting into your life. And, um, and then as your body changes, then you have to address those changes, those medical changes and those uh, medicine changes with your medical doctor. Exactly. On that note, Allie has a question from Illinois. Um, you had a question. Kids suffering from skin molds, right, from excessive vitamin D? Yes, hi. Um, I have three children, and um, they were diagnosed with neurofibromatosis. And through your videos, I learned that it was excessive, like milk and calcium and the vitamin D that the doctors were pushing. And um, so now they have cafe au lait spots and molds everywhere. I was just wondering, with children, how do I handle this problem um, naturally? Well, there's a couple things that you want to do. There's every vitamin, every mineral has an opposing vitamin or mineral. Um, the one for vitamin D is actually vitamin A, and there's another one, K2. So I would go to the other extreme and start to um, have them eat foods higher in K2, maybe take some vitamin K2. I would also uh, make sure that they 
take vitamin A from cod liver oil. Now, the, the problem with that is that it also has vitamin D in there. But when you take vit vitamin A in the, uh, from cod liver oil, it seems to buffer any effects from vitamin D since we, we can't live without vitamin D. Vitamin D is actually the most important nutrient, but if you just take vitamin D only without the A or the K2, you can uh, create imbalances. So I would recommend those two other things. Um, and also do research on zinc for moles. I think uh, you'll find some interesting information. Thanks, Sally. Hey, Robin, you're from actually, you're down the street from, um, you're in Virginia, actually. I don't know where, but uh, you're somewhere I in Virginia. I am. <laughs> what, what town? I'm in Abingdon. Mm, oh, I don't even know where that is. Is that must on the south side? It is, southwest Virginia. Mm. Okay. Near Tennessee. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Okay, awesome. So you yeah. have a question about um, absorbing nutrients. Go ahead. So I had my gallbladder removed many years ago, and since doing keto, I, ha I have invested in some high-quality multivitamins, omega oils, um, just wanting to know how that I can tell that my body is actually absorbing the nutrients and the vitamins um, since I don't have a gallbladder. The, the, one of the um, problems you may run into eventually is just not having enough the, of fat soluble vitamins because you might not have the full capacity of bile salts, so you probably would benefit from a gallbladder formula which has the bile salts in it. Uh, that being said, um, like you may look for symptoms of vitamin A deficiency, which usually is going to be night vision. So if you're driving at night and you just can't quite see that well, then we know there's still a problem with vitamin A, but it's probably, you know, the bile salts missing. So we got, um, so look for these symptoms to know that things are improving or getting worse. Night vision, that's vitamin A. Uh, maybe sinus congestion from vitamin A. Um, those little goose pimples on the back of the arm, that's vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin E could be weak in the muscles, have low endurance, huff and puff when you go up the stairs. Vitamin D could be bone pain, nosebleeds, things like that. And then, um, I mean, there's a lot more symptoms. So that's what I would look at. I think a good one would be just to night vision. That might be the best option with that. Thanks, Robin. Can I have the book? All right. Okay, so one last one here. Uh, I think it's Siva on Facebook. I have pin and needle sensations in my muscles with muscle cramp, tingling sensation along with high blood pressure after being on the paleo diet for three years. Um, other things listed, weight has gone down, but maybe doing something wrong. Doctor now thinks there's Crohn's. So the, I'm going to answer this. Okay. Okay. So. We can't speak about the paleo diet. I've seen paleo cookbooks and recipes that have um, sugar, chocolate, all kinds of other things, root vegetables, a lot of other sources of carbs, and it isn't healthy keto. Yeah, that's right. It's I not mean, the, the same solution thing. is in this book here, and uh, if you YouTube the Dr. Berg uh, videos or go to drberg.com and find the videos how to start healthy keto. That's the answer. It, it, uh, it, there's no other answer to that question because we can't vouch for the paleo diet. I don't, I, it doesn't get the results that the healthy keto way of eating gets. I, d I do want to mention pins and needles just because there are some other reasons for pins and needles that you might want to research on your own. Um, one would be a B12 deficiency and that can come from low stomach acid that can come from not eating enough meat. In your case, it's probably not that. It could come from IBS or some type of bowel problem. So, of course, get checked for that. Right, but, but it also could come from hypercalcemia, too much calcium. So when you ask for a specific symptom, instead of um, trying to solve it, I would get in our plan and see if it doesn't help you. And then, you know, you can also look to these other areas. But I think uh, um, the reason I don't recommend paleo is just because it's, too hard in carb. Yeah. So. Anyway, uh, Siva says not taking any bad carbs. It's just a little too too general. All I can say, and there was a there's actually a Facebook um, comment earlier 
by a guy or a gal who said, I totally handled my IBS when I changed to the healthy keto and intermittent fasting. Right. So there you have it. You, you just have to get on, on the program and uh, t take a stab at it and see what happens with your body. What your medical doctor suggests to you is your thing. And on that note, on have that a note, wonderful weekend. We will see you yeah. next week, guys. Have a great one. Sorry yep. we have to cut out early. See you next time. Have a and wedding watch, to go to. We've got a lot of videos down the pike, so yeah. stay tuned. See ya.